Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Travel Geek. I'm Kyle O'Donnell, and I'm actually here filming in Borneo for my latest movie, Travel Geek Documentary Malaysia, which should be released uh, June, July 2013 this year. So Borneo is actually the perfect place to talk about how to keep up with your exercising while traveling. There's a lot of travelers out there who have asked, uh, how do you keep up a regimen of working out? How do you stay fit when you're traveling? How do you keep up with the patterns and things like that? It's very difficult. I've only recently got back into working out myself, and having traveled in the last few months, it's, it's definitely a challenge. But I think I've worked out some very good points of advice, some tips, and I'll include those here. Firstly, very important items to bring with you while you're traveling. A long sleeve synthetic material shirt is incredibly important for working out. Name your reason, uh, sunburn, uh, adverse weather, very dry and windy conditions. Another huge benefit to a, a long sleeve shirt is that, I hate to say it, but you're gonna sweat, okay? But so you, you'll sweat into the shirt and the shirt will actually keep a nice little layer of you know, moist cloth on your body. It will cool you down. It'll be hot at first and you'll just think you're sweating too much and you'll be wiping sweat off and all that stuff but leave the shirt sleeves down and they'll, they will create a nice barrier. Uh, Borneo is very moist. It, it, it rains just about every day. There's one season in Borneo uh, and, and you're gonna run into lots of countries like that while you travel. But on the other hand, you could be in a hot country, you could be in an incredibly cold country. In, in either of those cases, you know, the long sleeve synthetic material is gonna do the best for you as far as keeping you cool, keeping you ventilated, taking care of you while you take care of your body. Speaking of clothing, do not run in your hiking boots and do not hike in your running shoes. What you don't want to happen while you're running is realize that the mountain that you climbed yesterday tore out the bottom of your soles and now you've got a, a hamstring injury or charley horse in your calves or something like that. Uh, you don't want to have any injuries while you're while you're traveling. Shoes are annoying. I realize that sometimes you have to tie the shoe strings on the back of your backpack and throw them and it kind of dangles and they get caught on stuff. Just work it out. Doesn't matter if they have excellent hospitals, you just don't wanna be uh, having all that downtime. And speaking of uh, shoes and clothing and all that stuff, bring your stuff, bring your own stuff. If you're a big person like me, you can almost guarantee in places like Latin America, uh, Southeast Asia, Central Asia, you are not going to find your sizes. In Asia, a, a large size shoe is probably like an eight or a nine. I'm not kidding. If you're from the States or Europe, you're probably already too big to buy clothing in Asia or you know, Central and South America. Another very important item of clothing that you're going to want to bring with you is a hat. Sunglasses also help, but definitely at least bring a hat. Even in a cloudy day, the light diffuses. It poses basically the same threat as would direct sunlight because you're running for a long uh, period of time outside. If you're an asthmatic, make sure to bring your inhaler. Even if you have some congestion up there, uh, bringing an inhaler with you will do you a lot of good. You never know what kind of pollution you're going to be near, you never know what kind of incl inclement weather is going to be around. Uh, bringing an inhaler, even if you think there might be a risk of an attack, very important. Same thing for diabetics. If you are going to a country you know you're going to be working out, bring some extra needles with you. You have no idea where the nearest hospital is going to be. This brings me to what to eat. Probably one of the most effective foods at feeding the body's energy stores that I've learned throughout my travels is to bring peanut butter jelly and sandwich bread. I know that you think the sandwich bread is gonna crush in there, and it will to an extent. It, it also kind of depends on what kind of bread you bring. You could bring a bowl, like a French bowl style, and just cut it as you go. Um, you could bring the loaf that's already cut and just kind of keep it at the top of the pack or like uh, put it inside of a bag and hang that from, the, from your backpack or what, what have you. It doesn't matter how you bring it, just bring it. The four and five carbon sugars inside the bread, these are gonna break down really quickly and offer very fast energy for those, those quick workouts and those, those fast paced workouts. The natural saccharides, the polychain saccharides inside of the jelly, as well as the proteins inside the peanut butter are, are going to kind of replenish what, the, what, what your body needs to keep you going, those, those carbohydrates and those, those proteins. Peanut butter almost always comes in a plastic or a glass container, and so does jelly. Well, it might be a little heavy, but trust me, if you're going to be working out while you travel, it's definitely worth bringing. Speaking of things to bring with you, I, I don't always travel with this, but uh, some kind of a weight gainer of some type. Uh, this one's made by Horley's, and Horley's isn't all that good, but it does have whey protein, and it does have a, a daily allowance of carbohydrates and things like that. The diet that you're going to have while you're traveling is gonna be vastly different from the one you have back home. So in addition to 
uh, whatever you're eating, you know, eat the, eat the green leafy vegetables, which are high in antioxidants. A great supplement to keep with you is glucosamine. It helps lubricate the joints while you're doing your workouts, and it also supports muscle recovery. And speaking of muscle recovery, another thing that I try to bring with me is creatine monohydrate. The important thing that it does is it decreases the time where your, your muscles are recovering. And speaking of planning for this day, that day, and the next day, if you are going to do a mountain climb tomorrow, it probably makes sense not to go running five to 10 miles today. Traveling is a lot of times on the fly and it's very impromptu and you get motivated to do things because you meet somebody in the hostel and they're gonna go do this thing the next day. Well, trust me, if you go and work out and then the next day go do this other thing, your body's gonna hate you and you're probably gonna hate your body. So just be smart about it. Another very cool thing that I've found that works well for me is to, before you leave, download some whatever workout videos that you like doing onto your laptop before you go. P90X is an excellent program that I've started doing recently and I can't say enough good stuff about it. I also like Tai Chi. It's a little funny to watch people doing Tai Chi, but it actually increases balance and focus and uh, being able to center yourself in something. Some of your uh, workout programs actually have uh, an additional yoga program. The P90X, for instance, has a yoga program that's excellent. It's kind of like yoga extreme or yoga on steroids or something. In any case, just uh, uh, think about loading those up before you leave. Once you're out of the house, you don't have access to your hard drive or your high-speed internet connection where you can order and download these items before you leave. Another key ingredient to an excellent workout while traveling is to pace yourself. Uh, one of the ways that you will easily get into a pattern of doing this is that if you bring one workout shirt and one pair of shorts, and obviously if you wear um, different styles of socks while you work out. Just bring one, maybe two of those, and then everything else is your traveling gear. The reason this is important, and, and it's kind of counterintuitive, if you're going to pace yourself, it's important that you exercise one day and allow your body to recover the next day. The hostel or the hotel that you're staying at generally has a service to wash and dry and fold and deliver your clothes to you. So uh, that's a great way to keep yourself from overdoing your workouts. When you're traveling, days bleed together. I don't know how many times I've just like, I've wondered, I've done so much in one day to the next. I don't even remember what I did yesterday. So uh, make sure that you, you limit yourself on what you can wear. That'll help you keep that regimen in your head. All right, so let's talk about the workout itself. Now, there's tons of ways to uh, work out no matter where you're at. Being as we're in Borneo, a, a great way to work out is to just find kind of like an open area or kind of like a secluded area. I actually just ran right down the street. I, I, I uh, talked to a local and he said that there's like an abandoned school down the road. I found they've got basically a running track. I mean, it's a road, but it's a track. It doesn't matter where you are. You could be in Indonesia. The point is being out in the sticks, it's gonna be very easy to find a place to run. Having said that, you're gonna to wanna to watch out for local traffic patterns. Obviously, you're gonna to wanna to watch out for like animals, debris, pollution, things like that. But as long as you're smart about it, you can pretty well find a good place to go running. Now, if you're in the cities, the, the place to run isn't necessarily gonna be as available to you and as free as out in the country, but there's a unique benefit that, that you're gonna find when you're in any kind of a major hub. In most cities throughout the world, there are uh, gyms, a lot of those gyms have like day rates that are extremely cheap. But let's say you're in a bigger city, say Bangkok or Kuala Lumpur. These types of places are even better because they generally have the option to offer you a free day. If you go in and, and you explain that you're, you're an expat and you're here and uh, you're thinking of joining a gym or finding a gym, they offer those free incentives for people kind of in your situation. You want to test the gym out. You want to kind of have a one day thing. They're engaging in that particular offering knowing that you might not join their gym. So it's not a terribly dishonest thing to do. So in any case, uh, that was my travel advice for all you exercise nuts out there. I hope you found this video to be useful and that you found a couple of uh, interesting things you might not have thought of before. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel below. This video was made specifically for my blog, kyleodonnell.me. So if you subscribe, you'll get all the inside information that, that gets sent out with each new video to tell my subscribers where to find the video, uh, where to find the blog, and when to expect that to come out. Also visit kyleodonnell.com for books, photos, and films of all the travels. And of course you can find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash kyleodonnell the travel geek.